What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So in this video we're talking about 10 affordable spring fragrances that aren't the normal recommendations. Some that I'm guilty of not having spent any time with yet this spring that I think are just fantastic fragrances that you might want to consider if you don't want to spend a lot of money and you want to smell great. So let's discuss them. Stay tuned. While I do have the newest flanker in this line, there's no reason to take away what's kind of been my favorite in the Ferragamo line. It's Ferragamo Bright Leather. It's beautiful, full of citrus, soft blonde leather accord with some green spices like basil and rosemary. Not super spicy, more about this blonde leather accord. It literally gives me that Italian leather um, of like the upgraded interior in Mercedes S-Class, for example. I've always kind of related to that, that uh, Napa leather, if you will. Beautiful stuff. It smells great. It's on the fresher side. It's a very wearable, daily wear uh, type of leather. Man, there's even a slight creamy tone to it that doesn't make it too heavy or too rich of a fragrance. I think, you know, regular spring days, whether a cool, crisp, or warm, and maybe on the toasty side, depending on your area, this stuff will be just fine. Above average performance overall. Not a beast, but definitely not weak. It's worth checking out. It's Ferragamo Bright Leather. Watery, fruity, aromatic, and spicy. That's all the ways I would describe a fragrance like Coach Open Road. Definitely in the same vein as something like a Dolce & Gabbana K, a Rocha Sloan, but this is more prominently featured on like the peppery spice. It's got this watery, yet fruity and citric smell. It's apple, things like bergamot, stuff like that. With a nice creamy aromatic tone, lavender sage, uh, it does have a little bit of that kind of geranium feel to it from the other fragrances I mentioned, but I don't remember geranium being in the notes. I know it definitely has the lavender and the sage, uh, citrus and pepper, because that's really what stands out to me in this fragrance. Great, versatile, everyday wear, casual, work day. Doesn't matter. It's signature scent worthy kind of stuff for guys. That doesn't really get talked about. Very affordable these days. Average performer, right in that you know smack dab middle of the road, five to six hour range type of longevity for me personally. And again, this is something that goes with everything. It's Coach Open Road. As woody aromatic as woody aromatic gets, we're talking about Ralph's Club. This is the Eau de Parfum, the original lavender sage, and I believe vetiver and cedar. I think it's literally that simple, those four notes. Very much a blue fragrance, but woods and aromatics, it's as basic as the scent profile shows you. It smells the same, but it smells really good. This is a highly versatile fragrance that another one that can be a signature scent you could rock every single day. They've gotten very affordable. There's now three fragrances in the line. This is by far the easiest, most mass appealing, uh, crowd friendly version of the scent profile. If you like things that just smell good and you can spray it and roll on about your day, you might even get a compliment or two. This is one you might want to consider, especially for the money. It's really good stuff. It's Ralph's Club, the original Eau de Parfum. Here's one that doesn't really get talked about all that much, and it was a hype monster for many years, and they've put out several really good fragrance flankers in this line, but the original Lacoste L1212 Blanc, or Lacoste White, still a phenomenal fragrance, still can be had for around 40 or so-ish dollars. Uh, average performance, this is all about citruses, a little bit of green spice, and leather. A little bit of a floral tone, I believe it's tuberose. It's a white floral smell. It's either jasmine or tuberose. I wanna say it might even be both um, because there's a light yet fresh, somewhat creamy white floral tone. It might be tuberose. But the leather accord here adds some depth. A bit of density, a richer character to the profile, if you will, that I think would overall be a bit more boring if it weren't for this a leather leather accord, because the citruses, the woody notes, and the you know the herbal tones, they're all fine and dandy. But when you add florals and leather, that kind of changes the scent profile. Doesn't make it lean feminine at all. Very much a everyday men's fragrance that I think shines in the springtime. Again, I, I think I mentioned performance previously. It's average range, six, maybe seven hours type of stuff. For me, some maybe get to get a little more. Some people might get a bit less in performance, but don't get me wrong. I think the O Intense is the best of the bunch, but this is where it all started. This got really popular for a reason and made them generate flankers 
to a flanker because this in itself is a flanker in the L1212 line and then they made several Blanc flankers from there. So definitely still worth checking out to this day is Lacoste Blanc, the original in the L1212 line. Aquatic aromatic powdery, green and spicy woodsy, kind of like a, and it's crazy to think this, more complex take on Aqua Essenziale Blue from Ferragamo, one of my personal favorite fragrances. This was recommended by some subscribers and what a great recommendation it ended up being. Afnan, Highness 6, also known as Highness Blue. This is phenomenal. This bottle is super heavy too. Now this is on the higher end of affordable. This bottle's around 60 bucks, but performance is great. The quality here is, I would say, slightly above mid-level. It's not super synthetic. And it's a very interesting, versatile, masculine, yet modernized scent profile. Because again, it's a watery aquatic, but it's also powdery at the same time. It's kind of the tale of two fragrances. Very much a blue fragrance, like the name and the color would indicate. This is such a good one. Look, I wasn't super impressed or anything the first time I smelled it. Then after I started to spend a little time with it, it's one of those situations where the fragrance did grow on me to where... I happily recommend it for others to try now. Performance is above average. It kind of falls in that seven, eight hour range in longevity. For me, I've heard people tell me they get about 10 hours out of this one. They get more like seven to eight, which is still really good longevity. It's on the louder side, so you don't need a lot of sprays, but you heavy sprayers, knock yourselves out. But as far as the springtime, this has depth, this has character. This is good stuff. It's Afnan Highness Six. Now, this comes across as very fresh and watery to me while still being earthy, spicy, and green. It's based around vetiver and cedar, but still super, super fresh. It is Narciso Rodriguez Bleu Noir Eau de Toilette Extreme. You can get this one for a really good price. I believe 50 ml like this, around $45, $50. That's what I paid for. It was right around 50 bucks, I believe. From Fragrance Buy, you can get 100 ml for just a few bucks more. Very affordable, underappreciated in this line. The Eau de Parfum gets all the love, even the Parfum, the powdery iris one. This is a great daily wear in the springtime because it's just so fresh, peppered spice and woodsy, a little smoky. Like this vetiver here is not super earthy, but it does have a bit of an earthy tone because it's a smokier type of vetiver. Maybe there's a dark wood note in here that I'm just not remembering, but... It has that darker edge to it while still being fresh and watery. And there's no watery notes that I can recall in the note breakdown the last time I looked, but it does have a watery citrus type of feel. Um, and I don't remember what citrus is in here, but it's very watery, fresh, peppered spice, woody and aromatic. This is a great masculine everyday wear, above average performance and very affordable. This is some really good stuff. This is Narciso Rodriguez Blue Noir ET Extreme. Now this is very vibrant and bright. It's even in the name. It's Mercedes-Benz Man Bright. Now this reminds me of kind of the citrus of Bleu de Chanel. Has minty green tones with some pink pepper. Dries into a sweet powdery tonka bean type of smell. Very much a blue fragrance, but the bergamot and mint combination make for this very, very bright opening. That's what they were going with with a name like this. And they nailed it. They really did. It quite smells lovely. I have to say, this is one of those fragrances that I would encourage checking out. I liked it so much the first time I smelled it, back when it was still an exclusive to Perfume Mania. I paid full retail for this. Now you can get it for way less than what I paid it paid for it. And I know if I would have waited, I could have got it cheaper, but I didn't want to wait. I really liked how it smelled. And I would strongly encourage you to check it out because it's not the best option for high heat summer, but spring daytime, Great option because you get all that brightness and citrus, but it's also got some deeper elements to it like frankincense and the tonka bean here really stands out. It's a little bit heavier in the dry down because it's powdery sweet, a little resinous. It's actually really good stuff. Average to slightly above average performance. Super, super affordable and underappreciated. This is Mercedes-Benz Man Bright. Now this is one that during the springtime I like to reach for and it's been slipping my mind up until recently. Uh, that's why we're going to talk about it here today. Azaro Porum, Cologne Intense. Not all that intense, but definitely more so with most cologne flankers are these days. On the fresher side, there's this mastic note. It's a little coniferous and woodsy, uh, but you still get a juicy citrus. I believe it's lime that's in here and nice and aromatic. It's good stuff. Man, I mean good stuff. This is one of the better Azaro Porum flankers. Above average performance, this one for being as fresh as it is is like a six to eight hour range fragrance and longevity for me. You can get 100 mLs like this in like the $35, $40 range if I remember correctly, which is still a few bucks less 
than what I paid for it. I paid in the 50s, low 60s range when it was still pretty new, a pretty new release. Um, and then now you can get it much more affordable than that. And it's a great pickup. The color scheme is very fitting. It's very much uh, something I would recommend for warmer days. It works fine in the summer as well. But the slightly more um, kind of woodsy, somewhat coniferous type of feel in the dry down, lean it a bit more spring friendly with kind of the woody greener tones to it versus what I would want in the summertime. So definitely worth checking out. Lazaro Porome Cologne Intense. Now this one reminds me of another fragrance in its own line, but a more complete fragrance where Boss Bottled Unlimited was fruity, had this aquatic feel, minty, it was like frozen violet leaves was was listed on the box, if I remember correctly, in woods, whereas you get all the mintiness, spearmint, peppermint, you get citrus, you get woods, you get a little bit of this cashmere and vetiver combo. They give you this soft woody feel. It's very much like that. If you tone the fruity fruitiness down and change it out with citrus, enhance the woody note, and give it a little bit of a floral heart, you get Boss Bottled United. It's, like I said, a, feels like a more complete fragrance to Boss Bottled Unlimited. I got this one recently. Man, and I'm digging this one. I didn't think I would find a replacement for Boss Bottle Unlimited. Not that I was looking for one, but it reminded me of it right away. But there's more nuance to this one. By no means is this some very complex fragrance with, you know, drastic changes as it develops. It's pretty simplistic and straightforward. Kind of a three-stage fragrance. You get a top, a heart, and a dry down, just as the note pyramid would indicate. There's nothing complex beyond that. Average performance around six hours and longevity, but this is a great daily wear for somebody that just wants something that smells really good. Doesn't smell like every single thing out there, but at the same time, nothing challenge, challenging or remarkably unique about this fragrance, and you can get it for a really good price these days. There's a lot of Boss Bottle Flankers out there. It's hard to decide what might be the one for you, but this might be one that you were more than likely overlooking that's actually great for the spring. It's Boss Bottle United, the EDT. Last but not least, an all-time great, in my personal opinion, a 90s classic. This is Tommy by Tommy Hilfiger. This is the newest bottle that I've opened. I've been through many bottles of this over the years. Uh, phenomenal citrus green, juicy, spicy, cactus type of feel, grapefruit. The note breakdown shows a whole bunch of stuff from the old formula. Uh, it's basically a very woodsy, green, fresh, spicy citrus kind of fragrance. Daily wear stuff. Smells like a moment in time for the 90s. Very much a 90s fragrance that will never get old to me personally. I love the scent. It just, it makes me happy to smell this fragrance. This is a great rocking a polo shirt kind of fragrance. And I mean specifically a Tommy Hilfiger polo. If we're going to go ahead, I mean, you don't have to match the brands. I get it. But in the 90s, that was more of a thing than ever before. Um, and this was just, like I said, childhood for me. I, I want, this was the first fragrance I ever wanted. I got this gift set for Christmas when I was in either fifth or sixth grade. I don't remember. So I've been through many bottles over the years, all the different versions and formulas they've had throughout the years. Now, nothing special in performance. It's like a three hour, maybe four hour if you're lucky fragrance. This is one I would advise spraying your clothes. It's not like it's a heavy oil or anything. It's a cologne spray, lower concentration, but bright, fresh, has some zest to it and kind of an overall unique tone, even though it smells of a style, the 90s style of fresh fragrance. It still, it doesn't smell like Aqua de Joe. It doesn't smell like CK1. It doesn't smell like Issy Miyake, Lodissi. It smells like Tommy. So all time great for the spring because the green notes here, I think scream spring. It's Tommy by Tommy Hilfiger. Well, that's the 10 that I have for you today. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, because I do appreciate all the feedback and I love hearing from you guys. Of these 10, what are you familiar with and or what sparked your interest in maybe you're thinking about checking out this spring? Definitely let me know down in the comments. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of the 10 I featured in this video and you give them a spray now, you might end up thanking me later. Have a good one, guys.